Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. This is Brett Owens from Chrometa, our CEO and co-founder. Going to take you on a spin uh, through the system. We will go for 10 minutes uh, sharp here, and then I'm happy to take your questions uh, afterwards. Uh, I'll take them throughout as well. Uh, if I can uh, get them quickly on the fly, we'll do that. Otherwise, we will uh, go uh, again a crisp 10 minutes here, save some time at the end. Uh, what I'm going to walk you through is the process of reconciling my time that I've had captured already by Chromata. So uh, like you, hopefully, I've had my time uh, tracker running on my machine. I'm showing you from my Mac here. We also have a PC time tracker. Uh, what this is doing uh, for me is capturing my time passively as I work so that uh, within a certain application, I'm able to see uh, what application I was working on and then the details within there. So for example, uh, for uh, Gmail entries, which is my own email client, I've got the subject line of emails that I touch, the to and the from, uh, as well as the CC line here so that I could make sense of, for example, this email, um, see what it was all about, and then uh, categorize that time uh, down to my timesheet, and then ultimately uh, bill and get paid for uh, this guy. Uh, so same idea with all our applications. Mobile, I'm going to talk about how to get your phone calls and text messages in here uh, for other documents uh, such as Microsoft Word documents. Uh, we'll we'll uh, cover that as well. So all the applications on your computer, uh, we're going to uh, get that time captured and tossed down uh, to our timesheet. Also want to let you know where this uh, rolls up from. So we also have a timeline view. I'm going to access this by clicking the uh, timeline button here in the upper left. And this is taking me to a uh, play-by-play -play of what I did. So for example, for the 10 o'clock hour on the day I'm working on, which is uh, from Wednesday of last week, I've got a minute-by-minute uh, -minute play play-by-play of everything that I was doing. Uh, so this is going to roll up onto the summary screen that I just showed you. Uh, so you can categorize either the either from there or you can do it right here from the timeline. So let's go through some examples for both. Okay, so like you, uh, I'm, I'm bouncing around a lot as I'm working, uh, jumping from application to application, emails are coming in, a lot's going on, uh, but a continuous block of uh, consecutive minutes could be uh, potentially the same thing. So let's see, uh, say that everything I'm doing from the 10 o'clock hour um, on uh, through the 11 o'clock hour was all the same thing. What I'm gonna do to group all of this into one uh, time entry is I'm gonna move it to a project I'm going to say uh, select which client uh, and which project or matter I want to move that to. I'm also going to give uh, this uh, bucket of time uh, an annotation as I do that. So I'm going to say that this was uh, all the same time entry. I was uh, preparing something for uh, Kevin. I'm going to save this. And now back onto my summary screen. Uh, this is all, uh, let me just change my filter here. Uh, this is all moved from my unbuilt time and down to my timesheet here. So you can see I've got various entries uh, of things that I was working on uh, for Kevin. I've got all my original entries still uh, contained within here, but these all roll up uh, to uh, this uh, bucketed entry. Uh, we are rounding up uh, based on the rounding increment that we've got, and then telling that uh, our 24 minutes, our 12 minutes, 48 minutes for a total of three hours and 24 minutes for uh, this day. Uh, let's talk about other ways that we can get time into this project. So from uh, our summary screen here back uh, to our unbuild time, let me just pick on uh, an email here and I'll show you how to get an email uh, time entry in here. So one uh, other example is I could take this email uh, where you can see I was also emailing back and forth with Kevin. So what I can do is I can take this time entry here. So it's a one minute entry, but still goes to the same project I wanna get this build for. So what I can do is move this down to the same client, same project, and by the way, uh, if you have a big list in here, which uh, no doubt that you do, uh, we have an active search which will uh, automatically uh, filter this screen as you go. So that's a nice little shortcut. Uh, for uh, pulling up the project that you're looking for. Uh, what I'm going to do is assign it to this project right here, and I'm going to give it the same annotation uh, as one of my other entries. So I'm going to say I was preparing this doc uh, for uh, Kevin, save this guy, and now this is going to be added down uh, to this one here. So this was the email entry that I moved. So now we bucketed it in um, uh, down here. So we've got this uh, again down to our timesheet. We can uh, make that process faster by creating uh, keyword-based rules. So for example, I could take this Word document 
and I could say anytime I see a certain keyword in this document, not only do I want to always move it to this project, but I'm going to hit the second mouse over here, which is our create rule uh, button. So this lets us create uh, a rule at the same time that we're going to categorize this. So what I'll do is I will take uh, the search results. So I'll say anytime I see something, uh, for example, uh, that's being emailed to Michael here. So anytime I see Michael's email address, I can create a rule to always move it to a certain client and project. I can also apply it to the past if I would like. I can then preview this rule. Uh, this is going to pull up all of the entries, uh, cases in which I've emailed back and forth with Michael so that I can see which uh, time entries will be pulled in. And then if I like what I see, I can go ahead and categorize and create the rule. And then that's going to do a lot of the automation for me, not only in the past and today, but then also going forward so that every time uh, I email with Michael, Chromata captures that entry for me, it will automatically be bucketed to the project that I ask. Okay, so as we are consolidating all of this time down in the timesheet, uh, where does it go from here? So we've got some options available on our exports here. We could, uh, for example, we could create a uh, printable view of this if we want to just physically hand it off to somebody. We can export it out to a program like Microsoft Excel, or we can go out to a third party uh, billing, practice management, or accounting system. So in uh, the case of an export to another system, uh, these time entries are going to come across uh, we're going to map uh, client to client, project to project, and then the, uh, our annotation is going to be the description that you'll see there. Uh, you will get the time over, and then uh, it's going to show up in those systems as if they were time entries created uh, directly in, uh, for example, uh, Cosmolex is our newest integration, which I'm showing off here. Uh, let me give you the current list of kind of who's who. So on the practice management side, uh, these are the systems that we integrate with. Um, all the major uh, accounting systems, all the major SaaS accounting systems at least accounted for here, QuickBooks Online, FreshBooks uh, Zero, and then we've got uh, Basecamp on the uh, project management side of things. So when we do an integration, what we're going to do is connect it up. So for example, if I'm a Clio user, uh, I will head on in here, I'll connect, I'll hit the connect button once uh, to get Chrometa synced up with my Clio account. What I will then have available is on my client and project page, I'll be redirected here and then I'll have a nice little import button where I can import clients in from, for example, Clio or Cosmolex or whoever uh, I'm currently integrated with. Uh, the advantage of uh, this import is that I can use, still use my accounting system, my project management system as the sole source of my clients and projects, uh, move them into Chrometa, assign my time entries from Chromatis so I've got a consistent uh, list there and then I can export them uh, back out to these uh, systems from here as well using a single click. So again, uh, from that timesheet, I could export for a day, I could do an entire week's worth of time if I want, um, I could do last week uh, if I want. So again, I'm going to just get all my time moved from my unbuilt time down to my timesheet and then I'll export it out to um, the system that where, where it's going from there. Okay, let's do a couple more uh, little nuances here, then we'll get into questions. So let's talk about mobile. Uh, I've got some Android time entries captured here. Let me get to uh, today. Okay, so if I check out uh, some uh, Android entries from, actually these are from Sunday. So uh, let's say I'm working Sunday or even I'm texting with clients Sunday, I wanna get this time captured. Uh, my Android app is going to capture my phone calls and my text messages for me. It will get the phone number of the person who I called or texted. Uh, we'll get the length of that as well. And then again, this is time that I can move, uh, categorize. I could also create a rule to say that anytime I text with Mike here, either anytime I see his name or anytime I see his number, uh, I want to move to the project associated with Mike. Um, so that's going to be our uh, Android setup. We can also do mobile emails if we're talking about Gmail as we've got a way to tap in with Gmail. So we can get, uh, if you use the Gmail app itself on your phone, whether it's iPhone or Android, we can get emails there. Uh, iPhone users for uh, phone calls, text messages, iPhone's a little more locked down. Uh, of course, we do have a way to uh, get the calls in from your carrier. Uh, and that requires an export from the website that your carrier uses. So Verizon 18 to your Sprint, uh, we'll do an export from there and then we can get your phone calls in. Doesn't have to be done every day. So that's a nice thing. You can do it, uh, for example, a month at a time. Same with the Android app. You can sync that up a month at a time if you'd like and go in and sweep the time uh, that uh, you capture. 
Okay, well, 10 minutes goes quick, and I am up here, so I will close with showing you how to get uh, additional support, and then I'll take questions. So if you have any questions, anything you'd like to see me demo in more detail, go ahead and type your questions in now. Uh, let me show you how to add uh, time trackers to your account. We've got our uh, Windows and PC uh, links directly on our website, so I will send this out to everyone uh, on the chat window. And then uh, Android, iPhone, you'd be able to go through those app stores to uh, access those apps. From our contact uh, page, we do phone, email, live chat, uh, available six days a week, so starting on Sunday, going through Friday, and that includes holidays as well. So we had, uh, uh, I know uh, Columbus, kind of, Columbus Day, kind of a pseudo holiday, but we have folks on, uh, we will have folks on Thanksgiving Day uh, ready to help you out. So Sunday through Friday, phone, live chat, email. We also have live chat within the app itself. So lower right, if you want to uh, start a chat with Jen here, if you have a quick a question for her, uh, just tap on uh, the icon there and that will start a live chat. Otherwise, I thank you for joining. Hope it was helpful uh, today. So stay in touch. Let me know how everything's working out for you and uh, hope to talk to you soon. So thanks again for joining and everyone have a great rest of your uh, Wednesday evening.